Imagine the world just a few years back when technology quietly advanced in the background. Then suddenly, generative AI hit the headlines. Media channels everywhere were a buzz with articles exploring the capabilities and potential of this new wave of technology. The real tipping point came in March 2023 when OpenAI launched GPT-4, a model so advanced it could outperform 90% of human test takers on the SAT, which determines college admission in the US. However, GPT-4's capabilities extended far beyond academics. OpenAI revealed that it also excelled in fields like law and medicine, taking tests and demonstrating proficiency in knowledge-intensive domains. Within just two months of its release, ChatGPT, powered by GPT-4, had captivated over 100 million users. This unprecedented adaption made waves, sparking discussions on AI's role in the future of work, communication, and knowledge sharing. Yet, alongside the fascination came a fair share of concerns. Experts began to speculate about the future. Could AI evolution hit a plateau by 2030? The excitement of this advancement was tempered by reports predicting that AI could significantly impact the job market. As tools like ChatGPT found real-world application in areas as high stakes as legal trials, where lawyers were reportedly using large language models to assist in cases. In today's transformative era, it's clear that generative AI is reshaping our world. So, what exactly is generative AI? And how does it work? More importantly, what does the rise of GPT-4 mean for us? And where might it lead? Before we dive into these questions, make sure to like, share and subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated on the latest tech content from Edureka's YouTube channel. Also, check out our latest certification courses on generative AI and chat GPT models the link to which is in the description box below. Before we jump into what exactly generative AI is, let's discuss today's agenda. First, we will start by defining what generative AI actually is and looking at some of the most interesting examples in the field. Then, we will explore the working of these tools by visiting their sites to see them in action. And once we have a good understanding, we will dig into the real-world application and even do a hands-on demo to showcase how generative AI functions. We will then explore the mechanics of generative AI by creating a YouTube summarizer app, perfect for tuning lengthy videos into concise summaries. Further, we will explore generative AI's potential impact on jobs and the future of this transformative tech. Plus, I will share some tips to help you sharpen your skills and thrive in an AI-driven career landscape. So. What is generative AI? Simply put, it's a type of artificial intelligence that can produce new content across various formats. Here are a few areas where it's making a huge impact. First, content creation. It is generating text, articles, and blog posts, saving hours for writers and content creators. Next, image generation. Creating visuals or art from the text prompts as seen in models like DAL-E now on its third version. Next, coding assistance. Providing code suggestions and completions with tools like GitHub Copilot helping developers. Next, language translation. Breaking down language barriers in real time through advanced translation models. Then, personalized healthcare. Enhancing medical treatments by tailoring recommendations based on individuals' patient data. And finally, marketing and optimization. It helps establish marketing strategies in businesses. And these capabilities make generative AI a versatile technology that is reshaping industries. So let's examine some real-world application and see how they work. Generative AI is at the core of many revolutionary applications today. We have text generation. From producing entire articles to summarizing content, tools like GPT-4 are transforming content creation across industries. Next, language translation. AI-powered translation tools are improving cross-language communications by understanding context. Then, writing assistance. Grammarly are similar tools that refine grammar, tone, and clarity, assisting professionals and students alike. Next, we have business AI. Models are making business insights accessible, automating support, and enhancing decision-making. Next, music generation. AI is now venturing into creativity, composing unique tracks and musical elements. Finally, machine learning models. 
Platforms like H2O.AI are giving access to machine learning models, allowing users without deep expertise to create powerful models. Now that we understood the potential of generative AI, and now let's go deeper into how it actually works. So to understand how generative AI operates, let's break down the process. First, define objective. So start with a clear goal, whether it's generating text, creating an image or assisting with code. Next, gather and pre-process data. So collect and prepare data, ensuring it's clean and structured with the model. Then choose appropriate model. So select or design a model tailored to your needs, sometimes building on pre-existing models. Next, train the model. Feed data into the model so it can learn patterns and build into knowledge base. Next, evaluate and refine. So fine tune the model as needed to optimize its efficiency and accuracy. Then test and validate. Run test to measure performance and accuracy, ensuring it aligned with the objectives. And finally, deploy and iterate. So once ready, deploy the model and continue refining it with user feedback and data. And this cycle ensures generative AI models stay relevant and improve over time. Now, moving on to the examples of generative AI tools. So many generative AI tools are available today, each with its own speciality. Tools like GitHub Copilot for coding, DALI 3 for image generation, and advanced language models like GPT are among the top players. And if you're curious to explore these tools further, check out the video link in the description covering popular generative AI examples. Now, let's look at the growing presence of generative AI across different sectors. First, in healthcare. Generative AI is projected to reach a $17.2 billion market by 2032, transforming clinical applications and healthcare systems. Next, education. The AI-driven education market is expanding, especially for students, teachers, and administrators, making personalized learning more accessible. And then, workspace. Generative AI adaption is rising with the highest impact in marketing and tech industries, followed by sectors like consulting and healthcare. Each graph shows a significant trend as generative AI is becoming integral in diverse fields and reshaping workplace roles. As we look ahead, generative AI is set to transform even more areas. And here are some key impacts we can expect. In AI-driven creativity, from art to music, AI will open new creative horizons. Next, AI personalizations. Tailored user experience will become the norm. Then, real-time generation. Real-time content generation will improve virtual assistants and automated responses. Next, AI in architecture. AI will assist architects in design and material optimization. Then, human-AI collaboration. As AI matures, humans and AI will work in tandems to maximize productivity and innovation. Then, advanced AI models. We will see even more sophisticated models pushing the boundaries of what AI can achieve. Generative AI's future is promising, so with potential benefits that will enhance lives and drive economic growth. Now, are you guys ready to get hands-on? Stick around for a mini LLM project where we will build a YouTube video summarizer. We will show you how to extract video transcript and then we will use an LLM to generate summaries and build a user-friendly interface using Streamlit. Are you excited? So now, let's jump in. So first things first, we need a solid environment for our project. First, open your terminal and let's create a new Conda environment to keep everything organized. Let's run the code using VS Code. You can also use other code editors such as PyCharm, but let's use VS Code for now. Now, in the terminal, let's type the command for setting up the Conda environment in your editor. For that, run this command. Just type Conda create hyphen p virtual environment, which is venv python and equal equal to, we are using 3.10, which is the python version and give hyphen y. Here, the hyphen p venv specifies the path and the environment name, while the hyphen y skips prompt for a smoother install. So now while that's setting up, let's create a few essential files. So first, we will create a .env file for our API keys and environment variables. Next, we will create a requirements.txt file for the libraries we will need. 
such as YouTube Transcript API to extract transcript from YouTube and Streamlit for our front end. Then Google Generative for accessing the Google Gemini API. Also the Python.env for handling environment variables and Partlib for the better part management. Now with our files in place, let's set up the Google Gemini API access. Now head over to the makersuit google.com and as you can see on the screen in the top left corner, you will get the API key interface. And once you click that, it will redirect us to the API key interface. Here you can see a button which is create API key. So simply click on that and select your model and press create API key in the existing project and then your API key will be generated. Now copy your API key and once you have got the API key, open your environment file and add it there. So for that, let's create a variable Google underscore API underscore key. Over here, we will paste the API key. So once that is done, back in the terminal, activate your new environment with the command conda activate virtual environment backslash, which is venv. Since I've already installed Conda in my system, it's not taking much time. So while you're installing, it might take little time. Now let us install requirements.txt in our terminal. And for that, the command is pip install hyphen r requirements.txt. So once you enter, the files present in the requirements.txt will get installed. Awesome. So now let's move to the main code setup. So for that, open app.py and start with imports. First, let us import some important libraries. So for that, import streamlit as st from .env, import load.env and next load underscore dot env, which will load environment variables and next Let's import google.generative as genai and also import os and from youtube transcript api import youtube transcript api. So let's go to the youtube transcript api and check if you're doing it correctly because in some system it doesn't work. So you can simply go here and copy this command and paste it into your terminal. Now let's move on to configure the api key. So for that, just type genai.configure and inside the bracket, just type api underscore key equal to os dot get env and inside the bracket, let's add the Google API key here. Now to prompt your model, we will use a template like this. So simply type Please summarize this YouTube video transcript in 250 words or less, highlighting key points. Now moving on to extracting YouTube transcript. So for that, to fetch the transcript, we will create a function. So here in this code, as you can see on the screen, the function extract transcript details takes the YouTube URL as an input and retrieves the transcript of the video if available. First, it extracts the video ID from the URL by splitting the URL at the equal sign and taking the second part. And using YouTube transcript API dot get transcript video ID, it fetches the transcript data for the video ID. And it then combines the text from each part of the transcript into a single string. And if there is an error, like example, no transcript available, it prints the error and returns none. So this function effectively converts a YouTube video URL into its textual transcript. Next, let's write a function to generate the summary. Here, the generate Gemini content function generates the content based on the combination of transcript text and a prompt. So it first initializes a generative AI model called Gemini and then the model creates a content processing the combined input of prompt and transcript text. And finally, it returns the generated text from the model's response. So this function effectively uses the Gemini model to produce AI generated content based on the specific text inputs. Now let's move on to building the front end. Now to connect it all with Streamlit, first add a button labeled Get Detailed Notes. So when clicked, it prompts the user to enter a YouTube link in a text input field. And it uses the Extract Transcript Details YouTube link to get video transcript. So if the transcript is successfully retrieved, 
it generates a detailed summary with generate Gemini content, transcript text or prompt. So finally, it displays the summary under the headings detailed summary. Now let's give a finishing touch to our app. So for that, let's make it look great. You can add headers and also you can give a photo and maybe you can also add a YouTube icon to it and even customized colors and incorporating thumbnails if the link is valid will create an even richer experience. Now let us test the app. So finally, let's run a command streamlit run app.py. As you can see on the screen, our app is successfully running and now let's check if it's running fine. So for that, let's open our YouTube and here select a video that you want a summary of. So copy the link, paste a YouTube link into the app and hit generate. As you can see on the screen, it is running and in just a second, you will get the summary of the video. It has given us the summary of the video. Also, there is no limit to the app and it will consider even the longer videos. And that's it. With just a few lines of code, we created a powerful YouTube summarizer using Streamlit and Google Gemini. If you enjoyed building this, stay tuned for more AI projects. And with this, we have come to an end to this video on what is generative AI. And if you enjoyed listening to this video, please be kind enough to like it and you can comment on any of your doubts and queries. We will reply to them at the earliest. And do look up for more videos and playlists and subscribe to the Edureka's YouTube channel to learn more. And happy learning!